Okay, thank you, Chanel, and welcome everybody. This is our uh, second uh, class for the month of January with the theme of uh, sort of world travel um, with uh, uh, Art Nouveau travel posters is kind of our uh, visual theme that we're going to be going with. Um, I'll get into that in a minute, what all that means. Um, but we are working in watercolors today. So um, if you've got those great, um, somebody last time asked, uh, could you do it in acrylics if you didn't have them? And, and absolutely you can. Um, just be aware that I'm doing the demonstration in, in watercolors. Um, so that will, in terms of a one-to-one -one, uh, situation, make the most sense for everybody because um, that's, that's what I'm gonna be using. Um, so I, I do have an image set up and ready to go. Um, but before we get into that, um, I did want I want to go over um, some uh, basic supplies that you'll need, um, as well as encouraging everybody, if you've got questions, uh, just put them in the chat and they will be relayed to me and then we can have a little troubleshooting session or a question and answer or whatever, whatever the, the situation dictates. Um, so feel free to answer, uh, ask your questions in, in the chat and we'll get to those as best we can. Um, so first off, let's get into the supplies. And I'm gonna go over this fairly quickly today because um, most of you uh, know what the situation is that have been here before. And those that you even haven't, it's pretty straightforward. So I'll make this really easy. Um, in this picture here, you can see this, the actual set that I'm going to use. Um, I've got a set of 24 Artist Loft um, tube watercolors. Um, they're sort of an entry level kit that you can buy uh, online or you know in store or wherever you happen to be. Um, but it has a really good range of colors. And today I'm really gonna be trying to fine tune some of the color choices. So there'll be a lot of sort of subtle mixing of colors. Um, so having a variety of primary and secondary colors is probably best today. If you've only got the list that I've got, um, you know, one through, I think it's six there, um, that will also work. I mean, if you've got your primaries, your black and white, um, even though I don't have black on there, um, there's, you know, a way to mix a black from all of that. Uh, and a couple of earth tones, um, that's plenty. Um, but I have more than that just to kind of hopefully simplify and streamline our, our mixing process. And, and I'll explain that as we go. And then of course, you're going to need your rag or a, a paper towel or something like that. Um, I've taped my paper down. Um, you're also going to need watercolor paper if you're following along with the watercolor portion of the demonstration. Um, and then a container for your water. And uh, let's see, what else have I got there? And some sort of palette where you can mix all of your your colors together. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, if I miss something or if somebody has questions, feel free to put that in the chat. Um, so let's go. Um, I wanna show you a, just a few images. Last week I showed some images of uh, Art Nouveau uh, artists. And the reason why I chose um, this group of artists or this art movement is because uh, they really they really simplified imagery, and we're just trying to get sort of a, a, a nutshell picture of wherever we're going. Um, last week we we were in Paris, and this week we're going to be sort of uh, on a safari in Africa and Tanzania. It's really sort of a, a mishmash of different places, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but the Art Nouveau artists uh, really got to kind of the heart of the imagery that you're dealing with. Um, they tend to make it pretty flat. The color was a little bit simplified. Um, so there's not a lot of uh, really hard detail and things like that. So I'll give you a few uh, pictures here to look at. Um, so these are from different posters that I've rounded up. Um, and I'm going to be using some of the color scheme uh, schemes that we see here. Um, so this is one that's essentially monochromatic. There's only really uh, that's sort of the warm yellow and then it gets lighter and cooler or, or I should say lighter and darker. Um, so that's a really simple one. Um, this one's got a little bit more color and you'll notice a theme in all of these pictures that the, the colors tend to be sort of pastel and a little bit softer. They're not really hard and intense. Um, and I'm gonna really uh, pick up on that as we move along. 
Um, and Mount Kilimanjaro will be in our picture or a mountain that looks very similar to Mount Kilimanjaro anyway. Um, so that's a good one. This is another nice one that's got sort of a very simple palette. It's got some yellows and almost fades into kind of a purple uh, in spots too, but it's got a, it's got a nice sort of soft blending of of colors, which we'll take advantage of with our watercolors. And this is one I'll be using a fair amount uh, in terms of the colors here. Um, that sky, especially, um, it's got sort of that really dusky yellow, um, kind of brownish uh, color, kind of that you might see late in the evening or earlier in the morning. Um, and then here's one that's a little bit straightforward more straightforward in terms of kind of real harsh colors like a really strong blue um, and a really strong kind of yellow ochre and yellow ochre will be sort of a a thematic touchstone for this picture that we're going to be uh, working from so that's a few of the uh, the inspiration that we're going to be working on the other thing that we're going to be dealing with here um, this is going to be our main character in this in this uh, travel travelogue picture um, and it obviously is an elephant and if you want to take a screenshot of this and kind of use it um, we're not going to go into a ton of detail but it is a fairly complicated uh, uh, image and, and form and things like that so it's 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 the most detail we will go into so if you want to take a quick screenshot of this uh, feel free to do that right now as I as I stall for time for you and, and talk a, a little bit about it. Um, but just a quick little snap and then you can get kind of put it off to the side of your camera a little bit. Um, or even if you're feeling really adventurous, you could print it off. Um, but it's there for you to kind of reference um, as, as we're working through this. So feel free to go ahead and, and take that screenshot. But we will only have it up here for three, two, one more seconds. And then we're going to switch over to our scene. So I have the elephant up on the, on the small, on the, up in the upper corner. And then I have a couple of uh, posters down here that I think I'm gonna uh, use a lot uh, color-wise. Um, I'm, 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 like I said, I'm gonna put Mount Kilimanjaro in here. And I've got uh, the picture all, all um, drawn out. And I am going to allow everybody, I'm gonna give everybody, um, the, the main points of this. So you can follow along. I've just got a blue colored pencil. Um, if you've got just a regular number two pencil, that would totally be fine. But I'm going to draw this out. Um, so feel free to get a pencil um, or any drawing implement really that you have. That's not, uh, you know, water, like a watercolor pencil would probably not be the best thing because when we start laying watercolor over this, it'll, it'll bleed and, and cause all sorts of problems. So, um, get something that's not water-based uh, and a regular pencil, you know, like a number two, like a number two pencil, you know, school pencil, something like that, that works totally fine. So we'll spend a few minutes uh, doing this. And I'm, like I said, I'm just going to do the main points. There's a lot of detail in here uh, within the elephant that I'm not going to do. That's why I've got the picture up there. So if you need to reference that as we're going, uh, you can. So I'm just going to start with the horizon line. And the horizon line is just off of center as you go from the top to the bottom. So it's basically right through here. If you wanted to, um, here's the handy dandy not cheating eraser. And so I'm just going to go ahead and draw this out. And I'm gonna draw it probably um, more prominently than you need to, just so you can see it. So there's our horizon line. Um, and I'm not gonna do this in any particular order. I'm just gonna work my way around it. Uh, off to the side here, we have Mount Kilimanjaro or another prominent mountain. So if we're in, here's a quick geography quiz. Does everybody know where Mount Kilimanjaro is? And Africa is correct, but it's vague. Does anybody know what country Mount Kilimanjaro is? Feel free to Google and cheat. It's totally fine. Um, Jim and Jenny both said Kenya. Uh, I don't think it is. Wow. Who knew there'd be geography in the art class? I believe it is in K 
Tanzania. Of course, I just learned this yesterday too, and I didn't know that. I thought it was in Kenya as well, but a few references said Tanzania. So there you go. There will be no more geography quizzes today. That was it. So now I'm just, I'm just outlining some of these clouds. I've just got a few kind of spaced out. And the only reason I'm use, using blue is because it's dark and you can see it. Um, honestly, it's, does, it's not really gonna go color wise with what we've got going on here. Um, Cause I'm gonna really concentrate on sort of a, more of a warmer palette. Uh, yellow ochre is gonna be kind of our, our base color. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, now I'll go to the elephant here and this is the hardest part. And um, you know, I had time to go through this and do it ahead of time, but I'm gonna try and, and map this out as, as quickly as, as possible. But basically the elephant takes up about two thirds of our foreground space here. So if you wanna do a little tick here and a little tick there to give the basic size of it, that would probably be a good place to start. So maybe something like from tail to toe or to nose or to tusk. Hey, let's just do the tusk, about like that. So kind of right in the middle of that or just off to the side of the mountain there. And then just this last uh, fifth of the page. And I'll just start along the back just to kind of map it out. This is not how I would draw this. And if you've been following uh, Adrian's uh, drawings, this is, this is not drawing 101. This is just, let's get to the painting part drawing. So along the back, there is an, a really, you know, almost as like a camel in, in the sense that there's, there's two big humps. And the, the one in the front is, is a little bit taller. So keep that in mind as you, as you go. But the whole length of the body is basically just boom, boom, two big humps like that. And then the back leg, we'll just do this, is a nice straight line, more or less, right up to the rump there and then to the foot. And the feet are the probably the easiest feet in the entire animal kingdom to draw. They don't have really, they have toes and they have, uh, you know, toenails and things like that. Uh, but they're, they're pretty much just a little kind of square, slightly triangular mass right there. And so of course this front leg is a little bit closer to us, a little bit closer to the bottom than the back leg. Um, and then the front leg, we'll do that one now. There's a nice little gap of, of about, you know, that much, <laughs> all to scale, of course. And it's pretty much the same as the back leg in that it's a straight line all the way down to that front foot. And there's, there's a few kind of bows and curves to it. But you can sort of reference what I'm doing and also reference the picture that's up in the corner. All right, and now we'll go to the ear here. And the ear basically starts right where the, uh, that hump ends as we're working our way forward. So I'll just start it there. And then it's got kind of a nice little ribbed action down on the top there. And then it kind of comes right up into the face and then the bottom right there. And I like to move around when I'm drawing. And, you know, I mean, this is not a, this is not the way I would do this drawing, um, but I am trying to just kind of move around a little bit to kind of keep my proportions right. I mean, I'm just tracing here, but if I were drawing this freehand or looking at a picture or something like that, um, I would, you know, sort of maybe work over here a little bit, maybe work over on the front, um, just to make sure that I don't kind of box myself into a corner. And the tusk here uh, really is, uh, it's really a fascinatingly put together animal here. And the nose of the trunk, it's got all these little ridges in it. I'm not gonna draw those, but keep those in mind as you're 
as you're laying them in. And I've changed the trajectory of the, the trunk a little bit to make it a little bit more interesting rather than it just sort of disappearing into the grass. I've given it a little curve. And there we go. And then the tusks come right out of this and just come to the front there. And then there's another one up here on the back side. Kind of done this. Let's do that. Make those tusks really big. If you have any kind of, I didn't really need to do that, but I get myself a little fussy. All right. So, all right. That's that's pretty good. And um, I, I've done a few shadows down here. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm just making a little shape where the color that I'm going to use here on the ground is going to get, it's going to get darker under here because this is a shadow uh, that the elephant is kind of projecting onto the ground. So there we go. And then there's a few other spots al along here that I put. You don't need to be exact with these. I just sort of threw them in kind of uh, somewhat randomly. They're kind of coming out from the sides and coming in. Uh, I guess that would be sort of the overall um, scheme of things. And then there's one big one right in the front here, comes right down to the bottom and then dips back up. These are just gonna be little color shifts that we're gonna do. And if you look at that one there, the, the one on the bottom, the Mount Kilimanjaro one, that's kind of the idea I'm playing with. There's some of them in the middle one as well. Um, so it's, it's, just a, it's just a little way of uh, giving us a guideline for when we start uh, getting a little bit more complicated with uh, the different, different color shifts as we go in here. I also have some trees in here, um, but honestly, when I did this sort of off on my own, I really didn't get to those. But I'll leave them there and we can add them in if we've got, don't forget the tail though, it's pretty important. All right, so all these details in here, I'm leaving out, I will add them later, but the eye is just above the tusk, kind of right in the middle of the face from the top down to the tusk, if you wanna put like that, the hint of an eye. And there's some, some hints of, of little ribs in the, uh, the ear and the nose. Um, and of course the big, elephant belly there. I'll just give a little hint of that. Elephants are very wrinkly. So there's lots of just sort of stuff like that. Okay. All right. So here is what we're going to be working with. This is, a, this is our design. Um, now, if you were out in the uh, African outback, uh, African savannah, um, obviously you, if you saw an elephant, you, you wouldn't have the wherewithal to probably stop and get your pencils out and do all that sort of thing. But the, the idea here imagery wise is that we're making everything really simple. I'm not, I'm not getting into a, a lot of details in this. So that's the main point I wanted to go into here. And then the next point I want to, uh, work with is figuring out what colors we're going to use. Um, and I have decided uh, last week, I felt like the picture was a little bit all kind of all over the place. Um, there was a little, you know, a little bit of red here and a little bit of purple over there and green. It was kind of all over the map. I'm going to be a little bit more restricted in the colors that I'm going to be, I'm going to be using in the hopes that we sort of tie it together a little bit. Um, not keep it just one color, but, uh, sort of have a root color. And that root color is going to be this one right here. This is yellow ochre, um, and this is actually gouache. Um, one, because it's there's more of it, um, but it can be watercolor or gouache, it doesn't really matter. But yellow ochre is gonna be the color that we're gonna be using uh, a lot in this particular scheme. If you, want, if you wanna kind of try some other colors as we're going along, by all means, go for it. Um, but I am gonna be uh, making the effort of, of keeping yellow ochre as kind of our uh, our root color. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up this color right here. 
Um, and that is going to be very similar to the one that you see in the middle there uh, of the Kruger, the Kruger National Park, which is in South Africa. So we're kind of, like I said, we're all over the place here. And I'm going to just start by just putting a little bit of, don't worry, that'll come back, uh, putting a little bit of water everywhere in the sky except for in the clouds themselves. So, and I'm not going to do it all at once. Um, I'm going to use uh, kind of a nice big brush. I may even go bigger here because I'm covering a lot of space. Come on back. Mm -hmm. Go on. It always comes back. It understands its role. There we go. There it is. All right. So I've just basically been dampening this this upper area here, and I'm just going to try and I'm just going to try and find the color a little bit. And I've done a little bit of experimenting. And uh, basically, if I take some yellow ochre, so I'm getting some water, just kind of dampening it up. And I'm just going to, I'm basically going to dirty it up a little bit with some dark brown. And dark brown can be raw umber, it can be like Van Dyke brown. Um, let's see, what might, what do I use here? Yeah, I, well, you could do a mix of like, even ivory black and orange. You just want something that's dark and earthy. Um, and it's going to, you know, it's going to make this yellow less bright. So I'm doing a little bit, something about like that. That's what we're after. So uh, even a even a raw sienna or a sepia, uh, something like that might might work, might work well for this. So we're just trying to get the, the base color of the sky set up and keep that and keep those clouds for the time being anyway clean of color so yellow ochre raw umber more yellow ochre you're just sort of dirtying up the uh just sort of dirtying up the the yellow ochre with this arrangement this color selection I've got a little tear in my paper. By the way, the paper I'm using is this stuff here. Um, this is kind of an artist loft. Uh, it's a pad of, what does it say? 25, 24 sheets. And it's 140 pound, meaning it's pretty heavy and pretty thick, kind of like, like a light cardboard kind of uh, feel to it. And it works great. I've been using it uh, for the last few weeks. And uh, it does a great job. Uh, see, that's a little bit too intense. So if something like that happens, just get a little more water, spread it out a little bit, just kind of integrate it into the existing one. It, does, it doesn't have to be perfectly even. And in some cases, it's kind of nice when it's not. So, you know, if it gets a little bit bolder in there and it just sort of dissipates uh, you know, into these lighter sections, that's fine. You just don't want kind of a big slash of color that's a little bit too much. So I need to kind of re-wet portions of this. You can see that I have this tape down. Um, that's really important, especially when you're dealing with watercolor um, because the water causes the, the paper to bow. So be sure that you, uh, that you tape it down. And I'm not really doing a fade. I'm not like making it dark to light just yet. I may do that later if I feel like it needs it. But for the time being, I'm just sticking with kind of this, this root uh, earthy yellow ochre variety up there. Keeping our paint exclusive to the sky. So leaving the elephant alone, leaving anything else it started to dry here a little bit you can kind of reopen it a little bit and and get that color activated a little bit more just put little dabs of color everywhere and then just kind of move it around a bit there we go Okay. 
And you can see why um, something kind of stylistically like this, it's a, probably a little bit more important uh, to get a drawing down in some state of completion before you start painting. Um, because everything, everything is gonna be very isolated. Like you're gonna have a color here, you're gonna have a color here, you're gonna have a color. There's not gonna be a ton of, of blending going on. So um, that's, that's the uh, importance of that drawing here. So I'm gonna go back up here and make this a little bit darker. Try to get it a little bit more uniform. It's a little too splotchy for my liking. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of enhancement here. So adding a slightly more intense amount of the brown. It's still definitely kind of a yellow, um, but I want it maybe to be a little bit darker up top now as I'm kind of adding this in. Just getting a little bit more unified with the color. Yeah, all right, that's looking all right. So really a pretty simple start in terms of the color, just mostly oak, yellow ochre, probably about 75, 85% yellow ochre, and then just a little touch of the brown to kind of uh, darken it up and dirty it up a little bit, sort of make it not too intense. A yellow sky would be a little disconcerting, I would think. And I just wanna make down here a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. There's a lot of ways you can make watercolor darker. Um, you can start by just throwing a ton of pigment down. I like to kind of work, and this is really the way uh, it's recommended that you work in watercolor is, is you work uh, kind of light to dark. So whatever color you have in your mind is as being optimal, kind of think, you know, a step or two down from that. Don't, uh, don't commit too much to too early. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it's, it's a general, it's a general rule that, that has held up over time in my experience. You can always make things darker, but it's, it's oftentimes very hard to make things lighter with watercolor. Um, so we do have a question. Why are we right. using yellow instead of blue for the sky? Uh, is it all right to do that? Is that the question? Um, no, it was, why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Well, uh, one, I wanted to change it up. Um, I wanted to work with sort of a more uh, kind of earthy palette. And, uh, and I think it's going, it's, it's going to, when I get down to the grass, it'll make a little bit more sense because I'm going to use yellow ochre as the base down here. Um, this also sort of hints at like early in the morning, late, later in the evening kind of thing. So we're just sort of changing the time of day. Um, I've done a few landscapes lately and they've all been blue. So it's uh, maybe a little mental health choice on my part too, who knows, but um, I just thought I'd mix it up and um, also really get the idea of of having a root color to kind of bind everything together. So with that said, I've, we've got the entire um, uh, sky done. And now we're gonna go right into the next really biggest area. And that is this area down here, the, the grass, the savanna. So we're gonna start with um, yellow ochre as well. And if you want to use a little bit of brown, um, I am going to. It's not necessary, but I'm, I'm, I just like to kind of be somewhat consistent with it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of green. So if you look kind of down at the bottom or actually at either of these two, it's kind of an off green in both of these posters. And I, and I like that. And I also like the fact that it relates to our sort of starting root color here of this yellow ochre, um, raw umber, and then throwing a little bit of green into it. And I'm, like I said, once again, I'm not gonna pre-wet this one. Um, I'm gonna start lighter and then gradually I'll add darker spots. So something like this. And I'm just going right over the, uh, the different 
areas for this particular case, because I'm going to do it fairly thin. And hopefully by the time uh, we get back to it, it'll be pretty close to dry. So yellow ochre, a little bit of the umber, and then this nice kind of middle green. It's like, a, I think it's called, I think I'm using a permanent green is what, is, is what I'm using for the green there. But really any kind of standard issue uh, green will work. And this one doesn't matter. I'm not being super fussy about making this one uh, exactly even all the way through, kind of like with the, the, the uh, I keep wanting to say roof. I guess it is the roof of the world, the sky, the upper part. I'm making it um, consistent, but not completely the same. So it's got this kind of yellow ochre, but instead of going more brown, like up here, we're going a little more green. Suggest maybe, who knows, like spring on the savannah where the new shoots are up or something like that. All right, a little more water. I had the perfect amount of water when I started this and then it started to dry out and get a little bit, a little bit more, a little stiffer. I'll try and find that happy medium. There we go. And you know, the, the reason for doing this area, um, I'm always uh, advocating sort of a, a big to small, general to specific approach when you're dealing really with anything, color or values or, or whatever you're dealing with. Um, it, it one, it makes practical sense to just get the biggest areas down first and, and not, you know, get too consumed with, with details or anything like that. So that's the reason for, main reason for doing this area next. The sky was, was bigger, but not by much, but it was a little bigger. Um, and the other reason is it's a, a natural, flow from here to here because we're using that yellow ochre as kind of our starting point. So it's a nice logical shift in terms of priorities. And there we go. You can pre-mix a bunch of color. Um, if you like, just get a bunch of water in there and then throw a little bit of everything. Um, I'm sort of doing that, but also allowing a little margin for, maybe it gets a little bit more yellow, maybe it gets a little more green, maybe it gets a little bit more brown. So there is a little bit of variety in here. Um, and I actually kind of like it down there. So look at that, we've got uh, almost two thirds of our, our painting blocked in. Um, it's usually that uh, final stuff when you get into kind of the nitty gritty a little bit and the details um, that it can get, um, things get slowed down a little bit. But it's good to have kind of a general schematic. So, I mean, I would just like to sort of make the comment here of you can kind of see these colors are related, even though this is a warm color and this is more of a cooler color. They still have that kind of warmish yellow ochre, uh, earthy tint to it. So it's got a kind of a nice relationship. And that's sort of a mix of, you know, the sky over here and the grass down here and the grass to a lesser extent down here. Um, they, they kind of tie together nicely. So that, that was sort of the effect I was going after. Um, and now up here, this is set up pretty well. It's not, it's not super wet, it's damp but it's not to the point where if I, I put a, a dab of water in there or paint that it's gonna spread everywhere. So I think I'm ready to come up here and do these clouds. And all I'm gonna do, if you look in that middle one, is I'm just gonna do a, a darker version of these clouds uh, right in here. So I'm gonna take the yellow ochre and I'm gonna take a little bit of the brown and add a little bit more of the brown. And I think I'm going to try something slightly different. I'm going to add a tiny bit of red 
just to warm it up even further. So red is a little bit darker than this color. Uh, it's not quite as dark as this, but it's gonna warm it up and it's gonna darken it. So it's gonna be a color shift from this to this. And it's gonna be, uh, let's get the whole thing mapped in there. Not quite as dark as I thought, but it's a good start and we can always darken it up. I mean, that's a great thing about, about watercolor is, well, any, really any, it would work, it would work in, uh, uh, sorry, painting and thinking are generally not two things that I do well together. But the, uh, the color can always be incrementally made darker. So I'm not worried about getting it exactly right. First off, I'm just trying to get the general idea down. So, and actually I, I, I kind of like this one. It's a really subtle shift. And I think I might stick with this. I was thinking of going a little bit darker, but I think this works. So even though this is not perfectly dry, all this uh, area around uh, our clouds, it's, it's set up enough that it's not gonna bleed and cause a lot of problems. So, you know, that's part of the reason, boom, boom, you kind of go one area, another area, and then you can go back to that area. Um, so you, you're, you're kind of strategically laying out uh, your roadmap based on, on how you're gonna proceed with one, two, three, four, in terms of the areas that you're working. So here we go. No bleeding yet. And I don't anticipate any because, see, I just went outside the lines there. Oh no. Call the color by number police. And it did not bleed. So that, that tells me that my timing was right. My timing was pretty good. I, I didn't come in here too fast and get too much paint on too early so that it, it kind of moved around and went into this area. And there we go. Well, how about that? So the sky, more or less, is, is set up. We can always come back and darken it if we need to. But that that's that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good uh, approximation of, of where I wanted to go with that. And this is almost entirely dry now. But before I get to that, I want to I want to block in this area here, the, these kind of uh, the, the mountain background stuff. Um, and I think I'm going to go with more of a color like kind of down here. So this is sort of a almost a purple brown. Um, so I may get uh, get our brown that we've been using, which is the uh, raw umber, and put a little bit of our ochre in there just just to kind of make it a little bit lighter. And then um, I'm actually using another gouache color here. This is also the Artist Loft uh, brand of uh, gouache paints. And uh, the reason I'm using this as a gouache is not because necessarily because it's, and gouache is basically just a more opaque watercolor. It's very similar. You use it exactly the same way, but it's just a little bit um, more uh, uh, opaque, it, meaning it, it, you can't see through it as much. It doesn't have as much transparency to it. Uh, but the reason I use it is because this purple is almost exactly what I was looking for. So it's, it's called uh, purple mauve uh, gouache from Artist Loft. But, you know, any purple that, you know, this is a permanent violet for the watercolor set that I've been using that I've used that before it works. Um, I just like that one because this is not the, the mauve here because it's not quite as intense. Um, so I'm going to mix some of that up. And then here's the purple. And because I wanted to kind of move back in space, I'm going to cool it down a little bit even more. So I'm going to add some blue. Cooler colors tend to recede in space and warmer colors tend to 
pop forward. I mean, that's not a hard and fast rule, but it's it's a general um, it's a general rule that you can count on pretty well. And it does have a little bit of our yellow ochre, and we're gonna I'm gonna keep the the kind of snow peaks here of Mount Kilimanjaro. And other than that, I'm just going to try and make this as even as I can. And I'm, like I said, I'm just going to go right over these trees. I've already got them drawn in. They're, they're, they're in here. We probably won't get to them, but they're there if we've got time later on. Maybe I'll do a little bit of a fade here. Water. So maybe it's like the hint of some, some mist or something coming up from the ground right there. Making sure the tusks are, don't get obliterated with all this paint. Or it just gets a Can little darker as you get towards the top. A little lighter Sorry. at the bottom. Can you uh, repeat the names of the colors that you use to mix for the mountain? Yes. So it's raw uh, raw umber, which is a dark brown. So any dark brown. Uh, well, my thing went out, but that's pretty good timing. And then I added a little bit of our yellow ochre um, just to make it kind of a lighter brown. And then I added that mauve color. Come on back. Come on back. It should come back now. Um, a little bit of the mauve color from the gouache set that I had. Uh, it's basically just purple, just sort of a dark purple. Um, again, any, any purple will work for that. And then just to cool it down a little bit, um, I put in some uh, blue. So like an ultramarine blue or a cobalt blue or any, any kind of primary blue. And that's, that's what made this kind of purpley, um, purpley brown color. That is a technical term, purpley brown. There we go. All right, so now I'm just gonna continue this color in these little in-between spots. See, that's a little bit more purple and a little bit less brown, but I'm gonna see how that holds up. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. There we go. How's that look? Yeah, it looks all right. Okay. So I think this is this is definitely more purple. So I'm going to throw a little bit up in here just to kind of tie this together a little bit, not being too fussy about it. The snows of Kilimanjaro. There we go. Well done. Okay, so we have pretty much everything. I'm not going to do anything with the sun at this stage um, and probably won't at, at any point going forward. So we've got all of our main points done except our central character here. And the, the logic hopefully is starting to take hold. I am going to sort of start with this uh, brownish purple color as our elephant color. And this is where you could kind of go, kind of go a little bit crazy with it. Um, you, you, you know, you could make this more purple. You can make it more blue. I am going to take that purple that we had, and I'm just going to red it up because I don't want this to be exactly the same color as that. But elephants are kind of dark and and kind of a, uh, uh, you know, sort of a not a strong color sort of a gray, um, but I want it to stick out a little bit. And like I said, warm colors. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red just to kind of perk things up. So a little bit of purple, a little bit of brown, and then adding some red to kind of warm things up a little bit. And I think what I'll do here is I'll pre-wet the whole kit and caboodle there's a tiny bit of, of that yellow in there, but that's fine because 
That's our root color. And, you know, if we were doing like an oil painting, the, the way to think about it is sometimes oil painters will put a glaze of one color, like a thin transparent layer uh, over everything to kind of pull it together. So if we've got a little yellow in here, um, that's not a bad thing because there's a lot of yellow distributed through, throughout this whole painting. So I'm just once again, thinking about the continuity of our color choices here. And down here, it's, it's all dry. So, um, I don't have to worry too much about um, bleeding into one area or another. The only area that's probably still open is, is that mountain and I'll be particularly careful around there. And they're also really closely related. So I'm just pre-wetting this. Oh, don't want it on the tusk. which is why I did an outline of the tusk because I wanted to keep that area separate. Okay, so now I've got my sort of reddish, purplish, bluish, brownish, also known as our elephant color. Need a little bit more water. I'm not trying to be accurate uh, in terms of, oh, well, that's clearly not a, a true elephant color. I'm trying to make this work and integrate into the color choices that we've already made. And really, ultimately, that's the only thing you need to worry about. It's actually very similar to um, the color we already have for that, the mountains but we're gonna start here and we're gonna make things a little darker as we, as we go along. All right. So with it already wet like this, it's kind of doing a nice natural blend for us. So I don't have to you know, worry too much about getting everything laid in perfectly because the water will do the spreading of it for us, hopefully. There we go. That's why the wet into wet technique is a really, really kind of important part of learning the advantages of watercolor. If you're always just placing the, uh, the color on just dry paper, um, you're missing out on a lot of really nice uh, effects that you can get by, by having water already on there. A little bit more of this red. That looks a little more purple. Let's see how this goes. That's pretty good. More water. You have to work fairly fast to make sure that your that your color doesn't set up and you're, and you're working like that little spot there it was still starting to dry on me a little bit, but I got to it in time. So it's, it's integrated itself in nicely. And I'm going to repeat the mantra in my head. Don't paint the tusk. Don't paint the tusk. It's not the end of the world if I do, but it's a lot easier if I don't. There we go. All getting close. Let's start down here. All right, I think this is a pretty good elephant color. And it's just, I'm noticing it here. There's just a little shift. This is a little cooler and that's a little warmer. And when I start adding darks in here, um, it'll be much easier to see. And I'm not painting the tusks. Look at that, not painting the tusks. Okay. 
getting down to the end of my color, but I think I mixed up just enough to finish that trunk off. Oops. Get his trunk a little wider. It's the perils of, of being on the clock kind of rush. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good color. Um, I'm gonna come in with some darker areas. I wanna go in here and add these, these darker areas in the ground. We've still got a few minutes left, so we can do a little uh, enhancement of what we've already set up here. So at, at this point, I feel like we've got uh, kind of a, our entire color scheme up and running. So it, it feels like we're in good shape. Um, if we had to end right now, everybody would have the colors they needed. And then this is going to get a little darker or a little shift in, in more green. I could add, you know, some detail in here. I could add these trees in here, but I've got everything that I need. So the big to small, the general colors and general shapes to the specific colors and shapes is what we're always after. Um, and, and we're doing pretty good with that. So now I'm just gonna make some darker areas in here and I'm just gonna take kind of our root color that we started, which was a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and the green, maybe a little bit more brown. And then just to add to that, I'm gonna add a little bit of this blue. So basically a darker version of what we've got established already. And I'm gonna start under here with, the shadow. And again, these can get darker if you feel like they need it, but we're starting, you know, we're not starting here. We're now moving ourselves up a step on the uh, value scale. So it gets a little darker. And if we wanted to add more brown or add more blue or both, um, we could definitely do that but we're just adding a little sense of depth and uh, light to things here by doing this. And, you know, maybe these little marks here um, are not quite as dark, but there are maybe hints of the shadows from the clouds or something like that. So I'll just lay a few of these in here. This is all nice and dry for me, so I don't have to worry about uh, you know, stuff getting a little bit out of hand and bleeding everywhere. Again, that preliminary drawing is really helping us uh, kind of mentally organize all the different bits and pieces that we have to get sorted out. Almost had the right amount, but not quite. This one's a little darker. Maybe I'll put this darker, but yeah, that's it. Right in the foreground. Another thing with, I mean, we're not really doing realism here, but um, anything, anything dark is gonna tend to, or a strong, a strong contrast are gonna tend to move forward. So putting this right in the front makes visual sense. All right, where's our green? There we go. How'd I do? That's a little bit too green, but I could fix that. Look at that. Instant integration. The beauty of watercolor, it just sort of, the water spreads it all and kind of evens it out a little bit. Let's do this last bit. And if you look kind of at the, the posters that are, are sort of our color inspiration, there's a little bit of variety here. Like this is more yellow, this is more green. This one's a little bit sort of darker brown. So th there's, there's enough, um, you know, discrepancy from one area to the, to the other where we don't have to be perfectly uh, accurate with everything. Now, one thing I do wanna do, uh, and we've got a few minutes left, so we'll just do it really quick here. So I wanna add some real darks in here. And if you look at that um, uh, picture of the elephant in the, in the top, uh, top right, um, we're, we're basically gonna need to mix up a nice dark 
color to add a little bit of detail. So all I'm doing there is mixing uh, raw umber, a blue, ultramarine blue will be fine. And then I'm throwing a tiny bit of red in because I put some red in in the original color. So I want it to tie together here. So I'm just going to put in some elephant wrinkles. Just give it a little bit of, of definition down here. Really define the edges a little bit. Let's see what we got here. There we go. It's nice and dark all the way through here. So this is the big payoff. This is like, oh, we're getting a little bit of detail. Oh, it's starting to look more like an elephant. There's a little bit more sense of light. There's, you know, a lot more that's that's kind of rewarding to this. Uh, I'm gonna just do this. Rather than just big areas of flat colors. I mean, that's where we're starting from. Uh, but here we're kind of uh, going a step beyond just, just the basic colors. There we go. And as I, I get further away from my initial marks, this is getting a little lighter, but that's totally fine. Da, da, da. I want to get that eye. It's a nice little expressive elephant eye. This brush is probably a little bit too big, so I'll switch to a smaller one or a more fine one. So this is a size one brush here. I was using like fives and six, fives and sixes um, in the beginning. Oh, well, in the very beginning, I was using like 10 and 12s for, for these areas. But now that we're down into the into the detailed stuff, we need uh, we need the right tool. Lots of wrinkles around the elephant eye. It's tough living out there on the savanna. All right, put a nice hard edge on the separate that. Maybe even do a little bit of a yep. It's a little bit of a shadow right here. So just mixing in between whatever brush is most appropriate. So these are the little hints of detail that I, I drew in pencil, but I didn't outline them in really a lot of detail. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Give a little bit of detail down here. And so now this, this hard line here kind of separates from that background a little bit. Oh, let's see what else we got. Got to put your wrinkles in your elephant. And you could, you could do exactly what I'm doing down here too if you wanted to add some details um, into the landscape in the back. I'm going to just concentrate on this foreground guy here. All right. I think look at that. It's right at the hour. But uh, I would do some more. I would do some more detail in here. But this is a pretty good. I like this color scheme better than last week's because once again, like I said, I feel like the, the, the yellow ochre is kind of an anchor to everything. It sort of holds it together a, a little bit more. I would probably go in here and intensify, but a lot of this, if you look at some of this, um, the detail in here, a lot of these little wrinkles and, and blooms in there, they add to the texture of the skin. So this is where um, using your materials and taking advantage of the, the natural inclination of uh, watercolor really adds quite a bit to, um, to what we've got here. So we've got, we don't have any time, but let's have a few, maybe spotlight a, a few people that would like to, um, that would like to volunteer. If you wanna just hold up your picture and maybe we can, and Chanel can spotlight a few as we, as we end things here. Ooh, really nice. Very nice, Diane. Very nice indeed. I like that reddish tint to your background color. All right, Sarah, very nice. 
oh, I was really worried that the elephants would be a little bit butchered, but these look great. Elephants are not easy to draw. That's excellent. Really, really nice. And that dark on the top is really good. And Donna, oh, you went more purple with it. I love it. It's, it's kind of embarrassing because like the, all the colors of the elephant are much more interesting than mine ever was. So nicely done. Excellent, Donna. Yeah, that looks great. Excellent, that purple particularly. All right, Jim, good. Oh, you kept the elephant kind of like a, an albino elephant. I like that. It's kind of lit up. And that, and you put an orange in the, uh, uh, put some orange in the, uh, the sun. It's got kind of a nice orange tint through, through the, the ground as well. That looks awesome. Very nice. Anybody else? Christina. Oh, yo, oh, you did last week's and this week's. Great. Yeah, that looks really good. Oh, you made your sun even bigger. That looks terrific. I just used like a uh, scotch tape and just went like that. Or it was actually, yeah, it was a roll of scotch tape. So yeah, whatever size works. Oh yeah, another one. Great. You did something different with the sky. That looked good. Rose. Oh, excellent. Very nice. Sort of an another more purplish elephant. Very nice. I like these color choices, these, these slight variations. Ooh, more of a blue elephant. Very nice, Lisa. It's great. And you went full on uh, earth tone for that sky. Lois, awesome. More of an orange tint to the sky in this one. Looks great. It has, when, it, when the colors, like when it has these really warm colors, it just reminds me of that part of the world more. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I kind of was the question about the, the blue sky and the sort of yellow sky. That was kind of another one. KG, all right, right in a sketchbook, it looks like. That looks awesome. Sort of did a little uh, freewheeling interpretation with the colors that turned out great. Much more lush landscape. This is more of a springtime. Ours is maybe a little slightly more summery. That looks great. All right, Judy, excellent. So sort of went straight gray in the, uh, in the elephant color. That looks good. And then purple in the background. That's a nice separation between the elephant and the, and the mountain. Awesome. Very nice. And zoom user. <laughs> that looks great. I like those little touches of yellow in the foreground too, to kind of reference the sky colors. Excellent. Nice. Stephanie, excellent. You got the elephant drawn very well. Very nice. Oh, the yeah, and one, one more yellow. Ooh, Leah, that looks great with that. Um, almost more monochrome than ours, sort of less color variation, uh, like sort of one of those early posters that I showed in the, in the very beginning. That looks really nice. Sandy, went more brown with the color of the, uh, the elephant, the body of the elephant. Really nice. Oh, it looks like that sun is coming right out of like the, the mountain there, like kind of a volcano. Awesome. Ooh, Cindy, love the purple. Really nice. And like a pink sun. See, it does not have to be exactly, it's not a paint by number situation. You can experiment a little bit with it. Play with the color. I mean, you're gonna have to because my colors are different than what you have probably. Susan, all right. Ooh, I love that purple in that mountain there. That looks great. Real intense purple. It really sits back in space too because of the nice, cool aspect to it. Great. And Sarah, yeah, ooh, went full on green. That looks good too. It really makes the everything pop out more with that green background because green is really the only intense color there. And so all these other sort of softer muter, muter colors, um, they, they contrast really well with that green. That looks great. Colette, oh yeah. That's some serious red. That's almost like Australian outback colors. Those are great. It's the rare Australian elephant. 
Awesome. Thank I you, Mary. That is everybody. Awesome. All right. Great, everybody. That was fun. I enjoyed that one. Um, next week is the premium class uh, where we're still going to be dealing with watercolor, but we're going to go into some fine detail. Um, I, we're going to be doing a bird painting. Um, so if you're interested in that, that's next week. And then we'll end the travel uh, in the week following uh, with a New Zealand themed uh, travel poster. So uh, I hope to see you all in the next few weeks. Um, if I don't, have a great few weeks and hope to see you again sometime soon. And thank you so much. Uh, all the work looks really great. Feel free to post those as well. Uh, if you post them on Instagram or whatever, you can hashtag Michael's classes and things like that. All right. Thanks, everybody. Well, hope to see you next week. Take care.